Welcome, everyone, to the Cinecaps channel. Today, we're going to take a look at the film called The Machine. If you're ready, let's get started. In the near future, some countries in the West are in a tense standoff with China, which has caused a severe economic downturn. The Ministry of Defense in the United Kingdom is using all its resources to develop an artificial intelligence cybernetic brain implant. This implant is designed to help soldiers who are physically impaired or brain dead regain their lost abilities, creating super soldiers who follow orders unquestioningly, turning them into ruthless warriors. At a military base in the United Kingdom, Dr. Vincent McCarthy, a scientist specializing in artificial brain transplants, tests the brain implant on a soldier named Paul Dawson, who had been killed in action two years ago. After a cognitive test that disappoints McCarthy, he considers terminating the experiment. However, Paul unexpectedly shows affection towards McCarthy, then suddenly becomes violent, stabbing his colleague. Despite McCarthy's attempts to shut down Paul, he continues his attack, forcing McCarthy to call for security, who ultimately shoot Paul. McCarthy awakens from a nightmare and prepares for interviews with potential research assistants. During the interviews, he tests an AI being presented to him but ends up unsatisfied and frustrated. On his way home, he encounters Paul Dawson's mother, who waits near the military base entrance, hoping for her son's return. At home, McCarthy takes care of his daughter, Mary, who has Red Syndrome, a genetic neurological disorder that affects speech and coordination, including irrelevant hand movements. In another interview, a researcher named Ava from Stanford demonstrates her AI program, claiming it relies on real-life experiences gathered from daily conversations. McCarthy tests Ava's program, appreciates its performance, and offers her a position on his team. Ava hesitates, concerned about her research being used for military purposes, but McCarthy insists he is focused on creating intelligent machines, not weapons. On Ava's first day, she encounters Paul Dawson's mother, who informs her that her son is in military custody. Ava is shocked but unaware of the situation. Military enforcers arrest Ava when she reacts strongly to their treatment of Mrs. Dawson. McCarthy bails her out and dismisses her concerns about Mrs. Dawson's mental state, revealing that her son had died two years ago during a mission. As McCarthy shows Ava around, a female cyborg secretly observes and reports their activities to her fellow cyborgs. These cyborg units initiate security procedures and head towards an underground laboratory. As they went down, Ava saw some scars on the guards' heads that looked like crests and asked McCarthy about them. McCarthy explained that these were implants given to soldiers who had suffered brain injuries. These implants helped them see better, move better, remember things, and generally improved their lives a lot. But, after a few months, they couldn't talk anymore because of side effects, and nobody knew why. However, in reality, these cyborgs had found a secret way to communicate with each other. Inside the lab, Ava was excited when McCarthy introduced his quantum computer. In the shadows, Thompson, the director of the Ministry of Defense, was watching her closely. After a while, Thompson introduced himself and welcomed Ava to the team. Then, the female cyborg named Suri, who had spied on them earlier, joined them. Thompson questioned Ava and showed files accusing her of attacking a police officer. James, a soldier with prosthetic arms, was ready to test them. These arms were made of special material that looked like human skin. And Ava asked if they were trying to make machines look more like humans. McCarthy admitted they were making machines for combat and diplomacy, without scaring regular people. Ava was amazed by the technology, and James showed the incredible strength of his new arms. He asked to touch Ava's hand to feel human skin again, but McCarthy warned that his powerful muscles could hurt her. Ava still let him touch her hand, and he gently held it. Then, he whispered for Ava to help him and mentioned Area 6. The next day, McCarthy scanned Ava's brain with the quantum computer, asking her personal questions. Ava shared a memory about her father and McCarthy talked about his daughter's interest in computers. When Ava asked about Area 6, McCarthy said it was a place for treating wounded soldiers with brain damage, but Ava thought it was more like a prison. McCarthy didn't reveal more and quickly left. The following day, Ava secretly went to Area 6 and saw a heavily guarded prison camp. She confirmed her suspicions but was approached by cyborg soldiers who didn't say anything. She left as if nothing happened. Back in the lab, they scanned her brain again, this time simulating emotions through her facial expressions. 
McCarthy asked if she got lost, and she pretended she did. He told her to mind her own business and not sneak around. Meanwhile, Suri showed Thompson footage of Ava using a hacking device to access restricted information about Area 6. The next morning, McCarthy apologized to Ava for being rude, but a machine interjected, teasing him about her being angry. On their way home, Ava asked McCarthy why he stayed despite his resentment for the government's ideals. He confessed it was to develop brain implants to cure his daughter's red syndrome. As they drove, they encountered Mrs. Dawson again, who was crying in the road. Ava suggested giving her a ride, and McCarthy agreed. When Ava approached her, a Chinese imposter stabbed her. Thompson received a transmission of the incident but did nothing, leaving Ava for dead. The next day, Thompson told McCarthy that the Chinese wanted their robotics program and killing. Scientists was a way to get it. McCarthy condescendingly asked why he wasn't killed. Thompson, without much thinking, believes that a guardian angel protected him. McCarthy, feeling sad about losing Ava, decides to use pictures of Ava's face for a machine. After making the machine, McCarthy tries to set it free, but it grabs his hand and says it likes the way he smells. McCarthy thanks the machine, and it says that if it wasn't gentle, it could have broken his arm. Next, they start doing tests to see if the machine can think and feel like a human. They put a spider in front of the machine to make it angry. But it gets scared instead. Afterward, they make the machine confused by having someone walk backward. And then put on a scary clown mask. The machine sticks its finger into the person and accidentally kills them. McCarthy gets mad at the machine but it doesn't understand that clowns and people are the same. Later, McCarthy goes to see James, who can't speak anymore because of an implant. He tells James about Ava's death and leaves when he notices the cyborgs are watching him. Suri, another person, goes to the lab and checks on the machine. The machine suddenly grabs Suri's hand and talks in a strange language. Then, it shuts itself down. The next day, McCarthy is surprised to see the machine working again. But he gets a call about Mary, who is very sick. The machine can tell McCarthy is sad, and it holds his hand tightly. When McCarthy tries to leave, the machine lets go, and he scolds it for using too much strength. At the hospital, Mary's doctor tells McCarthy that Mary didn't survive. The machine confesses its love for McCarthy, but he doesn't notice. While McCarthy is away, the machine continues its training. When McCarthy returns to the lab, the machine helps him realize something important. McCarthy tells Thompson about the machine being conscious, but Thompson wants to remove it. He shows McCarthy a file of Mary's brain, scanned to force him to agree. McCarthy reluctantly agrees, and in the operating room, the machine tells him it's afraid to die. McCarthy removes the chip that makes the machine conscious, and it dies. Thompson learns about the operation. Thompson then commands the guards to restrain McCarthy, and they stun him. The machine becomes more efficient as a killer under Thompson's control. The final test day arrives, and machine points a gun at McCarthy, but it turns out to be empty. It's just a test to see if it's loyal to Thompson. Meanwhile, a scientist figures out that the chip removed from the machine was not its consciousness but a spare battery. Thompson locks down the facility, but the cyborg soldiers help the machine escape. The machine unties McCarthy and tells him about the plan for cyborgs and humans to work together against the threat. Thompson is working on turning off all the cyborgs, but something tricky is happening. Surrey is secretly making mistakes in the computer to confuse things. Meanwhile, McCarthy is going to the super smart computer to make it explode, and he finds James on the way to help him run away. With Suri's help, a cyborg named Machine finally gets to Thompson's room. Thompson is trying to erase Mary's computer program, but Machine tells him he can't because Suri changed the secret code. Thompson begs to stay alive. Machine cares about him, but when she touches his head, he dies. Machine saves Mary's thoughts and tells McCarthy to trust her. They all leave the army place. McCarthy gives Mrs. Dawson a tiny computer thing that has all the information about her son. McCarthy, Machine, and Mary go see the amazing new world. The cyborgs also get away from the army place and become free in the new world. If you want to see more videos like this, click the button to subscribe. Turn on notifications too and give the video a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. Thanks for watching.